Hello students, welcome once again to Kev Estry. In our previous video, we looked at the question 1A to E of 2023 WASI elective chemistry questions. In this video, we are continuing from F to J, so that we are going to be done with question 1. And in our next video, we'll move on to question number 2. Question 1F is made up of two parts. The first part, state the property of a substance that makes it paramagnetic. Uh, we have three types of mag magnetic materials. We have ferromagnetic, paramagnetic, and diamagnetic. For ferromagnetic materials, for them, they have a strong attraction towards a magnetic field. For the one we are talking about right now, paramagnetic, they also have attraction towards a magnetic field, but their attraction is weak. For diamagnetic substances, this is a different thing altogether. For them, they are opposed by a magnetic field. And now, this question is talking about paramagnetic substances, and it is asking us the property of a substance that makes it be attracted towards a magnetic field, but that attraction is very weak. And that property is simple. Pali field D orbitals. Since they have Pali field D orbitals, they are attracted towards a magnetic field, but the attraction is very weak. I, I state the difference between a pure covalent bond and a coordinate bond. Pure covalent bond. In the formation of a pure covalent bond, the atoms involved, the two atoms involved, each one donates electron or electrons so that they can share. So in pure covalent bond, the two of us want to share. So I will bring, you will bring, then we share. But in the coordinate bond, it is also called a dative covalent bond. The shared electrons do not come from both of the species. No, it comes from only one species. So if I want to form a coordinate bond with you, I will bring all the electrons we are going to share. It's just like having a friend who is rich. Mm? When you step out with him and you want to eat, that person is rich, so the person will bring money, buy the food, and both of you are going to enjoy the food together. That is coordinate bond. But the pure covalent bond is much more like you having a friend whose financial status is almost the same as yours. So if you want to buy food, you bring five CDs. He brings five CDs. You combine, you buy, and both of you would eat. That's the difference. Now, G. State two of the assumptions that are made in order to explain the behavior of gases. That is what we call the kinetic theory of gases. They are, they are ideas that we brought them about so that they can help us to explain how gases behave. So we can talk about one, gases are made up of particles or molecules that are constantly moving, randomly. Now, as the molecules move, they hit each other. And that kind of collision between the two gas molecules is perfectly elastic. Just like throwing a cushion ball towards the wall. If it hits the wall, that speed that it used to hit the wall doesn't change. It comes back with that same speed. And that is how the collision between gas molecules is like. And we call that perfectly elastic. Also, we say that the, the average kinetic energy possessed by each of the gas molecules is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. 
Now, apart from the molecules colliding with each other, they also collide with the walls of their container. And when the molecules collide with the walls of their container, they create what we call pressure. That is another assumption. Let me add one more. Another assumption is there are no or negligible force of attraction between the gas molecules. So if molecule A is moving and molecule B is moving, nothing attracts them or nothing brings them together. Unless, of course, by mistake they collide. But when they collide, each one will just move towards its own path. Now, these are some of the assumptions that explain the behavior of gases, otherwise known as kinetic theory of gases. H, it is in two folds. The first one, I, name the concept of assets and bases that deal with non-aqueous systems. And that we can talk about Louis concept. Louis concept. Now, I, I define an acid in the base according to the concept named in I. So, according to the Louis concept, an acid is an electron per acceptor, whereas a base is an electron per donor. According to Lewis concept, an acid is an electron pair acceptor. A base is an electron pair donor. Let's move to the I part of the question. A solid sample does not conduct electric current. Suggest two ways by which it can be made to conduct electric current. Okay. The two ways are Either we melt the solid sample. Because when you melt the sample, it will break into ions. Liquid ions. For instance, if you have sodium chloride and you heat it, it's solid, and you heat it, it melts into sodium ion in the liquid state and chloride ion also in the liquid state. Since they are ions, they can now conduct electric it. So one, by melting the solid sample. Two, by adding water to the sample. Now when you add water to the sample and the sample is ionic or is polar, what happens? It dissolves and breaks into ions. So for instance, if you have sodium chloride solid, solid sodium chloride and you add water to it. It breaks down into sodium ions in water, then chloride ions also in water. Now, since they are ions, they can carry electric currents. Electric currents uh, are carried, electric currents, they are carried by ions from one place to another. Just like a car, conveying people from one place to another. So if the solid sample breaks down into ions, then the ions can carry the electric current around. And the way by which we can break the solid sample into ions is either by melting or by dissolving it in water. Let's move on to the J part of the question, our last question for this video. Write balanced nuclear equations to represent the following nuclear chemistry, nuclear reactions. Uranium-235. Uranium-235 with atomic number 92. Undergoing a, a, an alpha particle emission to produce an element X. That means an alpha particle gets out of this uranium nucleus. So this is an alpha particle. An alpha particle has a mass number four and atomic number two, plus an element X. Now, in nuclear equations, 
We don't balance the number of atoms. No. What we balance is the mass numbers and also the atomic numbers. So look at this side, the left side of the equation. The mass number is 235. Then at the product side, we have 4 over here. So 4 plus a certain mass number over here should give me 235. And that number is going to be 231. So the mass numbers are now balanced. So over here, the mass number 4 plus 231 will give us 235. The same as the 235 over the, uh, the, the reactant side. We also balance the atomic numbers. Here is 92. Here is 2. So this part should be 90. So the 90 plus 2 on the product side will give us a total atomic number of 92 at the product side, which is equal to the atomic number at the reactant side. That is our I part of the question. Then our RI is saying that this element X that we have formed is also going to undergo a beta particle emission. So X with mass number 231, atomic number 90. A beta particle is ejected out of it and a beta particle is represented by beta sign like this negative 1, 0. You could also choose to write electron. That one too is right. Plus, an element you are going to produce, which is what? Y. We do same over here. We balance the mass numbers and the atomic numbers. At the reactant side, the total mass number is 231. At the product side, we have 0. That means this one will have to add to 0 to also give us 231. So 0 plus 231. I hope you are seeing it. Then over here, at the reactant side, the atomic number is 90. At the product side, it's negative 1. So negative 1 plus a certain number should give us 90. And that number is 91. So that the atomic numbers also become balanced. Thank you.